Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're about to take a deep dive into one of the biggest true crime cases in the universe, or at least on our part of the planet. From the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. It was a cold morning in Delphi, Indiana, on February 14th, 2017. The search for two missing girls, Abby Williams and Libby German, had entered its 22nd hour. The town was gripped by a sense of urgency and dread. Friends, family, and volunteers combed the woods near the Monon High Bridge, hoping to find the girls safe. Instead, what they found would change the town forever. The bodies of Abby and Libby were discovered in a wooded area, their young lives brutally taken. The details of the crime scene were grim, haunting those who saw it. One girl was found with her body posed beneath a tree, her naked form partially covered with branches. The other lay nearby, clothed but with no visible blood on her clothes. It seemed she had been dressed after her death. The scene was disturbing, almost as though it had been staged. Fast forward more than five years, and an arrest was made. Richard Allen, a resident of Delphi, was charged with the murders. The news of his arrest provided some comfort to the grieving town, but it also raised questions. Why had it taken so long to arrest him? Was he truly the person responsible? And what did the gruesome details of the crime scene reveal about the nature of these killings? Allen's defense attorneys, Andrew Baldwin and Bradley Rossi, put forth an alternate theory, one that they believe points to a different culprit or group of culprits. According to them, The crime scene was not just a horrific murder scene, but something more, something ritualistic. They suggested that the arrangement of the branches on one of the bodies, the positioning of the victims, and the manner in which the crime was committed pointed to a killing steeped in symbolism, specifically symbols associated with Odinism. Odinism is an ancient Norse religion, long since lost to history, but revived in recent years by neo-pagan groups. Some of these groups, the defense argued, had twisted the old faith into something much darker, aligning it with white supremacist ideologies. In their view, Abby and Libby may have been murdered by individuals practicing a perverse form of Odinism, acting out a ritual killing. The defense pointed to several law enforcement officers, including some from the FBI, who had considered the possibility of Odinistic involvement early on. They noted that the placement of the tree branches over one of the girl's bodies resembled ancient runes, symbols used in Norse mythology. Baldwin and Razi's argument was clear. This was no random killing. It was part of something larger, something ritualistic. But despite the compelling nature of their argument, the court would ultimately decide that this theory was too speculative to be presented to the jury. Judge Francis Gull ruled that no physical evidence supported the theory of Odinistic involvement. She feared that presenting such a theory in court could confuse the jury, complicating what was already a deeply tragic and complex case. Instead, the jury would hear a more straightforward narrative, one that focused squarely on Richard Allen and the state's evidence against him. The defense, however, would be allowed to argue for the relevance of their theory behind closed doors, out of the jury's earshot. The door, while not entirely closed, was certainly not wide open. But for Baldwin and Rossi, the exclusion of this theory was a blow. They had linked the crime scene to known Odinists, individuals who, they alleged, had posted photos on social media that resembled the scene where the girls were found. They also pointed out that some law enforcement officers who guarded Richard Allen at the Westville Correctional Facility had worn patches on their uniforms that bore Odinist symbols. Two of these officers, Randy Jones and Joshua Robinson admitted to wearing the patches, but they denied being part of any cult or hate group. Instead, they insisted that the patches reflected their personal religious beliefs, much like a Christian wearing a cross. Odinism, sometimes referred to as Asatru or heathenry, is a religion that draws from ancient Norse traditions. 
but its modern revival has been marred by some extremist groups who have twisted its symbols and rituals to align with white supremacist ideologies. Scott Meller, a professor of Scandinavian studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, explained that the original Odinist beliefs were not inherently violent. In fact, much of what we know about Odinism is pieced together from Christian writings, which often exaggerated the violence of these pagan groups. According to Meller, while the Vikings were certainly no strangers to violence, the idea of ritualistic human sacrifice is not well supported by historical evidence. However, in modern times, Odinism has found a new following among certain white nationalist groups. These groups, Meller explained, have warped the religion's original meaning, using its symbols as a way to promote racist and violent ideologies. This blend of Norse mythology and white supremacy is particularly prevalent in some prison gangs, where tattoos of runes and Nazi symbols are often seen together. The defense's memo drew on this connection, suggesting that the girls' murders could have been the result of a ritualistic killing carried out by followers of this extremist form of Odinism. They described the crime scene as being chocked full of signs of cult involvement and argued that law enforcement had overlooked these clues. But without physical evidence to support their theory, it was not enough to make it into the courtroom. As the trial for Richard Allen approached, the exclusion of this evidence left many wondering. Was the defense grasping at straws? Or was there something more to the case than what would be presented to the jury? The suggestion of a ritualistic killing tied to white supremacist ideology cast a long shadow over the proceedings, even if it would never be heard by the jurors themselves. There's no doubt that the murders of Abby and Libby were brutal. The grief their families and the Delphi community have endured is immeasurable. But the complexities of this case, the theories that swirl around it, and the evidence that won't be heard in court leave a lingering sense of unease. Could the defense's Odinism theory hold some truth? Was there a ritualistic element to these killings that investigators missed or dismissed too quickly? Or is this just another twist in a case that has been full of them from the beginning? One thing is certain. The trial of Richard Allen is not just about seeking justice for Abby and Libby. It's about unraveling the many layers of this tragedy and finding the truth, whatever that may be. The jury will have the difficult task of sifting through the evidence they're allowed to see and deciding whether Richard Allen is responsible for the deaths of two innocent girls. But with so many key pieces of evidence left out of the courtroom, the question remains, Will the full story ever be told? Or will the details that have been deemed too complex, too speculative, or too confusing continue to cast a shadow over Delphi, leaving the truth just out of reach? In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point of narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? For so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski